So my apologies to the editors in the room. Um, I'm a lawyer and I started writing short fiction and longer fiction and I was particularly frustrated one night when I wrote this. It's called The Writer and the Editor. <laughs> Writer, rain hit Sheila's windshield like pellets from a scattergun as the sun broke through the clouds. Editor, don't start a story with the weather and don't use so much description that it detracts from the face of the story. Writer, Sheila's windshield broke. <laughs> Fifth chapter, writer, Mama said Sheila's baby was as cute as a button. Editor, don't use cliches. You need to make it real. Writer, Mama said Sheila's baby was as cute as a real button. <laughs> Ninth chapter, writer, John was sure Sheila would confess. The judge thought so too. Editor, you can't be in the heads of two different people in the same scene. It's called point of view. Be creative if you want to show that both men were thinking the same thing. Right. John and the judge were like a two-headed man. <laughs> they both thought Sheila would confess. Fourteenth chapter. Right. Sheila was sure Harold would take to her. She prepared her lines, dressed well, done her homework. Turns out she was right. He loved her right away. Editor, there's no conflict in this story. Stories have to have conflict to be interesting. Writer, Sheila was sure Harold would take to her. She prepared her lines, dressed well, done her homework. Turns out she was wrong. Harold was a bastard. <laughs> 16th chapter, writer, can you tell me where to hide, Sheila shakily asked. Editor, careful with the adverb, just use the word said when writing dialogue. Writer, can you tell me where to hide, Sheila shakily said. <laughs> 21st chapter, writer, having taken the last round of medicine and gotten no better, the doctor said Sheila's chances were hopeless. Editor, this is a dangling participle. You make it sound like the doctor took the last round of medicine. Surely that's not what you mean. Writer, damn it, the doctor did take the last round of medicine. So much for Sheila's chances. <laughs> 32nd chapter, writer, the jewel is missing, Sheila, and I know you took it. Where is it at? Editor, your inspector is too sophisticated to end a sentence with a preposition. <laughs> writer, the jewel is missing, Sheila. And I know you took it. Where is it at, bitch? <laughs> Epilogue. Writer. Sheila had won the race, but her hamstrings were as tight as the tick on her dog's butt. Editor. <laughs> this simile is predictable and trite. You can do better. Writer. Sheila had won the race, but her hamstrings were as tight as the tick of her editor's ass. <laughs> the end of the writer-editor relationship. <laughs>
who nursed me after surgery when I crushed my wrist and Bess administered the painkiller. In March sun last year on her porch above the bend of our pond, Bess recalls my surgery 38 years ago better than today. While she rests, Jim and I walk a circle by the pond, red clay gardens, the Ravana floodplain. Up the lane, he says, she sleeps a lot and couldn't remember this morning how to use the stove. Medical tests have shown no precise cause or cure for Bess. After sharing, Jim steps into the woods along the spring green creek bottom to check young chestnut trees. Part two. In the creek, bright blue, floating in the weir of stepping stones, wings the size of my thumbnails. I reach under the butterfly not to pinch wing dust. Place it atop a fence post to dry. It is, is it alive? The proboscis twitches. Wings wiggle a smidge. Just the wind? If I learned anything from the Murrays, it's to pay attention. And it pops up, purple-blue, spring azure, and blows to the back of my crooked wrist. Part three. Back home on the Carolina coast, Tradescantia is blooming in my yard. Blue-purple, three petals, the thumbnail size of the Bentabar butterfly. Tradescantia, rich word for simple spiderwort. In the 1600s, John Tradescant, father and son, were both king's botanists. At Oxford, I saw the Tradescant herbarium in the dusty museum. Some may call wild, unruly Tradescantia a weed outside the borders of my gardens. It blooms March to November, keeping Bess alive every time I admire. Blue purple petals like three wings. I'm not ready yet to lose Rye Bess, my, my best mentor, or become an elder yet myself. And she died in April. And when I heard it, I found a white spiderwort by my well composer.